Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll delve into the beautiful world of Belle, a modern retelling of the famous fairy tale Beauty and the Beast. The story takes place into a virtual world where people can be whoever they want to be. Before we begin, there are major spoilers ahead, so viewers, beware. Now, let's get into it. In the ever-growing world of digital entertainment, people get the chance to become superstars in the popular virtual community called You. This virtual world is governed by its architects called The Voices, and with over 5 million users, it is currently the biggest internet society. By launching the You app, it will create virtual avatars, called the AS, for its users automatically, based on the user's personal biometric information, which will enable the user to feel what it's like to be in the virtual space itself. We meet our main girl, Suzu Nato, a high school student who is a bit of an introvert as she sits outside her house, staring into nothing. At school, Suzu stays silent as she watches Ruka Watanabe, one of the most popular students, perform a solo during a school assembly. Suzu is accompanied by Hiro, her best friend, and they go around school watching various club recruitments. We cut to a flashback to a younger Suzu with her mom, with whom she shared a love of singing and writing songs. However, during a family trip, Suzu's mom rescued a child from drowning in a raging river, sacrificing her life in the process. Traumatized by the experience, Suzu ended up hating her mom for choosing some kid over her own and led her to grow distant from her father. Suzu has also stopped singing and writing music altogether. One day after class, Suzu is invited to a karaoke session with her classmates. However, she panics after being asked to sing and runs out of the room. Finding herself alone at a bridge, she tries to sing but can't seem to find her voice, eventually breaking down to tears. At home, she reads a text from Hiro, asking her to check out you while creating her account. Suzu is given a beautiful avatar with freckles, who she names as Belle, using the English translation of her name. As Belle, Suzu finds herself able to sing once again. Performing a song she wrote herself, she attracts many other users from the get-go, but most don't give her any attention except for one. Time passes and Suzu gains confidence because of Belle. Suzu also finds that her followers also grow larger by the number after multiple covers of her song become viral on you. Suzu also realizes that her virtual world starts bleeding into her real life as her own classmates takes notice of Belle's popularity. With Hiro producing and managing her, Suzu continues to perform on you without ever worrying of anyone figuring out her real identity. As she becomes more famous, other users have also started calling her Belle with an E because it means beautiful in French. Back in the real world, Suzu also spends time with an older choir group consisting of her mom's close friends. While at their practice, she tries to sing but is still unable to do so. At school, Shinobu Hizetake, Suzu's childhood friend and longtime crush, tries to make her talk, but Suzu seems to be lost in her own thought. Shinobu grabs her by the hand, much to Suzu's surprise. However, their classmates take notice and Suzu walks away from the awkwardness while rehearsing what she wants to say to him. When she comes out of her hiding place, she sees Ruka and Shinobu talking. Disheartened, this causes her to leave them alone. Back in you, Belle is holding a virtual concert with the help of the voices. When suddenly, an infamous figure breaks into her virtual concert dome. The dragon, as the figure is called, is notorious for being one of the best virtual fighters in you. The dragon fights with the justices. Aka used pseudo security forces with ease, fighting until he breaks the coating of his opponents, forcing them out of the virtual space. The dragon's arrival causes an uproar amongst Belle's fans, earning him the moniker of the beast. Belle asks him who he is, but the beast ignores that and instead tries to scare her away. Justin, leader of the justices, calls out the beast's attention and accuses him of disturbing the peace in their community, eventually starting a manhunt to discover the real persona behind the beast. Justin uses a device to start attacking the beast and instructs the dome to be closed down, trapping everyone inside including Belle. However, the beast fights back and manages to escape from the dome. Watching the entire thing unfold, Belle becomes distraught as she tries to figure out what the beast's deal is. In the real world, Suzu's thoughts slowly start to revolve around the dragon as well. Hiro, upset at the cancellation of Belle's concert, also wants to unveil the persona behind the beast. 
During a train ride, she explains to Suzu that the AS is constantly connected with the person's biometric info in order to prevent people from having two avatars. Because of this, it's difficult to figure out the people behind the avatars. However, Hiro has managed to locate all of the beast's past opponents. The pair track every single opponent down and talk to them in an attempt to find out more about the beast. The first one is a tattoo artist whose artwork is similar to the beast's bruises. Another suspect is a middle-aged woman whose entire public online life is made up of stock photos. The third one is a superstar baseball player who is suspected to be a secretly violent man because he's always fully covered. During their investigation, Hiro and Suzu discover that the Beast is quite popular among children, with some calling him their hero. In Yu, Belle searches for the Beast and follows an angel avatar to his castle. Inside, she discovers that there are roses blooming inside the castle and that he lives with a couple of other AI. Belle then gets to meet the infamous Beast himself. He tries to scare her away, but Belle is persistent in figuring out who he is. As she follows the beast to the top of his castle, she sees a softer side to him as he gently cradles and coddles the little angel avatar. In the real world, the older choir members see Suzu thinking deeply about something and comment that she may be in love with a bad boy. They advise her to give him a gift to soften him up, and Suzu thinks of writing the beast a love song. She begins singing a soft tune while walking and gets immersed in her own world while thinking about him. Suzu takes out her phone to record the rough draft of her song and discovers the hundreds of messages sent to her by her peers. Apparently, there's a rumor going on that she and Shinobu are dating after seeing them hold hands a couple of days prior. Suzu scrambles to clear up the rumor before the fighting gets out of hand and manages to appease dozens of Shinobu's fangirls. During the chaos, Suzu gets a text from Ruka herself, asking to meet up. As Suzu walks home, still thinking about whether or not she should meet up with Ruka, she sees Kamishin, athletic jock and another close friend of hers, hard at work. Suddenly, Shinobu appears behind her, apparently waiting for Kamishin to finish his training regimen. He asks her if something happened today, and Suzu starts to talk about something but gets interrupted by Kamishin. Kamishin takes Suzu's attention away and tells her that he's going to nationals to compete in a kayak competition. After a brief conversation, Kamishin put his kayak away and Shinobu tries to ask what Suzu wanted to tell him before. Thinking over her decisions, she opts to tell Shinobu what she's been rehearsing a couple of days ago, that Shinobu doesn't have to waste time worrying about her anymore. Suzu then leaves a very confused Shinobu and runs away while agreeing to meet with Ruka. Back in Yu, Belle visits the Beast's castle again. Belle comes closer to where the Beast is and briefly touches the bruises on his back. Startled, the beast snaps and says that he knows she thinks the bruises are ugly. With his bristly demeanor, he scares Belle away. Belle escapes the castle, but not before being seen by the justices. They question her, but she stays silent. Justin threatens to reveal her true identity, but then, the beast appears and saves her. The beast protects Belle and takes her back to his castle for safety. To ease his injuries, she finally sings the love song that she wrote for him. Singing with sincerity, the tone of her voice reaches the beast's ears and two share a very romantic moment under the starlit sky. However, the moment is interrupted when new bruises appear on the beast's body. In the real world, more and more people speculate that Belle isn't doing any more concerts because she's scared of the beast. This leads to a worldwide search for the true identity of the persona, with users dedicating a viral hashtag hashed unveil the beast to the cause. Meanwhile, their first suspect is outed as a fraud after having copied the beast's bruises to make people think he's connected to him and boost his business. The baseball player is also taken off the suspect list after revealing that his secret is that his body is actually full of scars from medical issues. The middle-aged woman is also taken off the list because she's just a fraud. Meanwhile, Belle is once again kidnapped by the justices. Justin threatens to unveil who she is with his special device after being suspected that she's conspiring with the beast. Belle refuses to tell them where the castle is and even stands up to Justin by saying he doesn't care about justice, he just likes having control over people. Before things get serious, the beast's AI appear and rescue Belle. However, Belle leaves behind a rose petal that includes the code where the beast's castle is. In the real world, Suzu meets Ruka. 
In their conversation, Suzu jumps to the conclusion that Ruka tried to confess to Shinobu, but Ruka clears up the air and confesses that Kamishin is the one she likes. Suzu also tells Ruka her history with Shinobu, about how when they were six, Shinobu told her he'll protect her. After the death of her mom, Shinobu was there for her. Suzu ended up liking him after that. As Suzu walks Ruka back to the train station, they coincidentally see Kamishin. Ruka sputters out a haphazard, I'm rooting for you to Kamishin, and the boy mistakes it as a love confession. As the fates would have it, Ruka and Kamishin get together right after sharing their same adoration for Belle, much to Suzu's absolute shock. Suzu slowly backs away from the awkward mess of a couple and encounters Shinobu on the street. He tells her that he is something he has to say to her, and Suzu also replies that she has something to tell him. Before she can even formulate a sentence, Shinobu tells her that he knows she's Belle. She tries denying it and runs away from Shinobu. In the middle of her panic moment, she gets a call from Hiro saying that the beast is in trouble. Suzu makes it back to you and see multiple justices storming the beast's castle. Justin prepares to unveil the beast, much to the appreciation and support of Yu's resident users. Belle tries to search for the beast, but only see his AI beaten to a pulp. Justin appears behind her, taking pride in his cruel ways and threatens to burn down the castle. Belle sees where the beast is hiding and tries to save him. Before she can do anything, the beast escapes somewhere, leaving Belle and his burning castle behind. Meanwhile, Shinobu, Kamishin, and Ruka set off to find Suzu and Hiro at their old elementary school. In Yu, Belle desperately looks for the beast, but the virtual residents crowd around her, starstruck at her sudden appearance. Suzu thinks back to the investigations she did with Hiro in order to figure out the real identity behind the beast. She deduces that the persona behind him must be a child and asks Hiro to search for someone singing her very first song. The boy, named Tomo, is live-streaming and humming Belle's first song. He's in an empty room, when suddenly a man walks in and threatens to silence the boy if he doesn't shut up. An older boy, named Kay, shows up and defends Tomo from the man's verbal abuse. Belle recognizes the traumatic tics coming from Kay and instantly knows that this is the beast. Suzu connects with the live feed and catches the attention of Kay and Tomo. She tries to tell Kay that she's going to come and see them and offer them her help. However, Kay thinks that she's just another person who enjoys seeing the pain and suffering in people, becomes upset at her, and ends the call. In order to gain Kay's trust, Shinobu suggests that Suzu sing for him. However, he tells her to sing as Suzu and not as Belle, to show her sincerity and grab his attention. Hiro doesn't like this idea at all, saying this will undo what she and Suzu have worked so hard for. Growing impatient, Justin demands that Belle sing to draw out the beast. However, Belle grabs onto Justin's wrist and unveils herself to the world. Suzu presents her real self to the people, freckles and all. The internet users are in shock as she starts to sing. Though shaky at first, Suzu slowly regains confidence and her signature melodic voice reaches far across the vast expanse of you. Although some make fun of her for looking so ordinary, it doesn't last long as the sincerity in her song strikes the hearts of many. In her song, she's imploring for someone to come back to her and stay. Suzu stops for a bit, remembering the heroic act her mom did so many years ago, and it seems that she's finally understood the meaning behind her mom's actions as she strives to save someone else in her own way this time. Suzu hums a beautiful tune and she lights up, quite literally, in front of everyone. This quickly sends the virtual residents into stunned silence, and the remarkable happens right after. Millions of avatars sing along with her, lighting up the way for the beast to find her again, and even the voices come out to help her. Suzu sings the finale with as much heart and power she could muster, much to the delight of everyone listening to her. Kay sees this, and Tomo even asks his brother to meet Belle. Eventually, they get connected back to the brothers, but before they can even get the address, the father comes back into the room and disconnects them. Using a past recording, the group figure out the exact address of the boys, however they're too far away from them. With the authorities unable to do anything, Suzu makes her way to Tokyo alone. Suzu locates the brothers, but also encounters their father. She protects them from him, earning herself a cut in the process, but thankfully the situation settles itself. Kei and Suzu formally introduce themselves to each other. He thanks her for showing up, and states that he's always wanted to meet the real her. The trio share a hug, 
Before Suzu makes her way back to her hometown, Suzu is greeted by her father at the station and the two finally reconcile properly. Her friends also meet her by the station and they all walk back home together. Shinobu finally gets some alone time with Suzu and praises her for her bravery. Feeling pretty good, Suzu seems finally ready to sing as herself again. And that concludes the very beautiful story of Belle. We hope you enjoyed this one, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and tell us your favorite part of the movie down in the comments below. Until next time, bye!